So many of you will know I've been doing a series this year called Year of Rex where I've been getting personalised book recommendations every single month from a different source to try and have my best reading year ever. We're trying to get an average rating of 3.8 or above. So far I've paid professionals to give me book recommendations and I've asked my subscribers and patrons to give me book recommendations and none of them have gone above a 3.8 or a 3.8 average rating. So for today's video I have turned to the people who you would expect know me best. <laughs> <laughs> we like very best and that is my family so my family are going to be picking what i read today my dad my mom and my brother are all going to come in and give me one recommendation each and explain why and i've told them listen especially my dad need to be told this i don't think he's going to give me a good recommendation <laughs> he's going to be he's going to be something that, oh i don't want okay well whatever I've told them, like I told you guys when I asked for your recommendations, it's not necessarily your favourite book ever, it's a book you really think I'm going to give five stars. So we're going to see how that goes. I'm incredibly nervous. I have no idea what they're going to pick. They've been like freaking out all day. <laughs> My brother, we just sprang on him, he just got home from school. I was like, you got to recommend me a book. So I have no idea what they're going to pick, but um, I'm very intrigued. So I'm going to bring them in one by one and we shall see what they choose and what I'm gonna be reading in this vlog and this week. And hopefully we will have our best episode of Year of Rex yet. So let's just get into it. Bring them in and I won't look at the books. <laughs> uh, it's so painful because one book, I think, ticks a lot of boxes. It wouldn't necessarily be your choice. You're giving your reasoning. Come in and talk to the camera. Have you got the books? I've got two. Shut the door. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. The level of unprofessionalism, far too much. Okay, come stand, come stand here. I'm hoping it will have you get you in shot. Oh yeah, that's fine. Okay, all right. Talk to me. Okay, so I have two books in my hand. <laughs> You're welcome to recommend both of them. I could choose. That's true. I can do that. We can do that. I can do that. Um, one, I feel ticks a lot of your boxes. Okay. So, female author. No, um, wait, let me just explain why he says that. Because he always <laughs> gets upset that I say he also like, reads um, men. Okay, carry on. <laughs> so, um, Dad, after recommending a book by a woman. She's a feminist icon. It is cutting the top of your head off, by the way. I hope that's not annoying for that's you. That's fine. No, it deals with, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be shorter for you. It deals with um, discrimination against women. It deals with um, women trying to do a job that they're qualified for, but society doesn't accept. Okay. It deals with investigation. It deals with horror. It deals with murder. It deals with... Like, okay. It's, it ticks a lot of your boxes. Mm -hmm. The other one's a massive award winner. Okay, tell them briefly the genre that you read. You read a lot of fantasy i read um <laughs> from i read from science fiction through Wait, to fantasy. stand up normally okay <laughs> fantasy science fiction through to investigative horror investigative so, horror my I, goodness I, okay do you want to show me all the books are okay so the first book we'll, we'll start with um the one i've just picked up so it's the mask of silver by rosemary jones it's from the arkham horror genre of books a genre yeah you're chatting shit yes because it's multiple, no. mu multiple authors they all fit yeah in. it's all just ip yeah, but it's kind of it kind of is and it's kind of not um because they have a lot of latitude within the realm of writing the book yes they will mention some stable characters from the world okay but the rest of it is all on them and how they weave this together and this is uh an interesting book okay i loved it Okay. The second book, um, Hugo and Nebula Award winning Dune by Frank oh, Herbert. Fuck off! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Oh, this, you have this, a laugh! This book, I yeah. will put that one down. <laughs> this book, you can tell it's loved because the pages are soft. No. I've read this book so many times because I bought this when I was young. Um, it actually says that I own this book because I wrote it in there because I was taking it to school. Um, I love this book. This book is... So look, feel this book. Feel how soft the pages are. Mm, that is impressive. That is... How many pages mul is it? It's 500 odd. Whereas... Um, I don't trust her. I don't think she's a good person. The Mask of Silver is only 328. Oh, dad. So... Your choice 
I think this ticks more boxes for you than this does, but this is genre defining. <laughs> right, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if I'm ready to read Dune. Fine. But I also am not exactly interested in reading Arkhampora IP. But you don't know anything about it. Exactly. So I'm not as invested as you are. No, Imagine I... if you'd read the equivalent of this for something you knew nothing about. No, but that's fine. This does appeal to me more, I think, with like the 1920s. Is it 1920s? Yeah, it's around Hollywood that. makeup artist. Yes. A bit more mystery esque. Yes. I think this ticks a lot of boxes. I think for I'm going to go with this. Okay. Poor I might read, <laughs> read Dune one day. This is such but a good book. I'm just not sure if today's that day. No, that's fine. That's but fine. But everyone can tell me if they think I should have picked Dune instead. But I just think. Um, I just well, I'm ready. not sure any of your followers will have read this. Um, no, they won't. And I think it's an interesting diversion for you. It's the first uh, of the books she's written for this um, IP, if you will. Um, <laughs> I think it's, yeah, it's really good. Okay, thank you for your recommendation. That's okay. I shall read it. Lovely. <laughs> Say bye. Bye! <laughs>
Sort of yeah. a very... Mar- have you read Oryx and Crake by Margaret Atwood? No, I haven't. Ah, uh, okay. So very in that, that theme. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love M.R. Carey, who also wrote The Girl with All the Gifts. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Which is a you know, really well-known novel, was made into a British movie. And this is really, really, really good quality writing. Mm-hmm. Trilogy, uh, dystopian fiction, interesting characters, this bitch interesting to win. theming. <laughs> yes! <laughs> but mm. I really want to win... So, I'm going to ask you to read a book you haven't read, but you have faith, but you but love Have Annie you given Annie Hazelwood? I've given her a five star every, every book, time. Every book. See? Yeah. yeah. So, this is not about, yeah, see, this is about winning. It won't be a flop. I'm confident. No, the truth is. This is about winning and not just picking something I've read will have no context for Megan but I really or anyone to... watching everyone uh, 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 watches uh, is like what the fuck is this uh huh uh huh uh-huh. this is me winning <laughs> can you tell my dad gets upset because he feels like we gang up on him a lot <laughs> <laughs> not without reason <laughs> no it's true not without reason so there you go okay oh, you should read that and then when you've read it I'll read it yay read it. okay good choice mum okay thank you I literally just read that here's what in my last video Love. I just read Love Theoretically, ah, which you loved. I did love. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. See, that's much better. Can I win? Yeah, well, I mean, you're in a team. Yeah. So you don't just win on your own. It's I'm the a bit av- screwed, aren't it's I? It's the average rating. <laughs> you, you've got fucking Dad and Toby as teammates. It's the equivalent of picking me for PE when I was at school. <laughs> you know, I'd be the last one to be picked because I was going to bring the team down. Well, you've. I'm the elite. I'm the elite power athlete <laughs> in this scenario. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I had my DNA test <laughs> done. No, this is the best thing. They're going to love this. You're not going to cut this out. <laughs> I had my DNA testing done, and my DNA came Ooh. back as. That I have the DNA of an elite power athlete. <laughs> so anyway, the equivalent of having the boys on my team is like crippling an elite power athlete. Yeah. With, yeah. With, I with... should have let you do your own episode, really. You should have But done. also all you read is trashy romances. Anymore. Yeah, but I'd have picked trashy romances that I would have thought you liked. Uh, and I've, I'd have delved back into my history to pick some things you'd have liked. Everyone but... tell mum she needs to read the New Thursday Medical Club. Okay, I will Thank read you. the New Thursday Medical Club. No. I'm just mid book and then I'll read it. I promise next. And then you'll read Bride. And then I'll read Bride. Okay, get out of here. Love you, bye. Love you, bye. (laughs) There's a Miko in the house. No, pick him up again. Pick him up again. There's a Miko in the house. Say that you love Toby. Mm. No, I I brought him here and he's not happy. I don't love him. Toby, it's okay. Don't don't panic. Mm -hmm. Don't panic. No, Toby, don't do that! Oh, I thought you were. I thought you were knowing now. No, you. Oh, whoops! Whoopsies. <laughs> well, I know what it is. Show them what you picked. Okay. I've... Toby just went. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I was eager to show it. It's Jurassic Park. Okay, this is a very nice edition. Didn't you get some like Barnes and Noble uh, in America? I think it was a Florida Barnes and Noble. Yeah. Yeah, it's got shiny silver pages and everything. It's Sorry, very fancy. As well. Sorry. Sorry. Just no. You have to apologize. <laughs> I had to do the same thing for Dad. Okay, there we go. And yeah, it's got a map. Every good book's got a map. We love a good map. Do like a it's good got map. fancy pages, yeah. but it's not this long, is it? Because this is a binder. No, this is uh, both the Jurassic Park and the Lost World, so it's only about half of this. Half of this. But you do get a little bookmark within the book. I love a good bookmark in the I'm book. I'm here for you. <laughs> and what have you? Why have you picked it? I think I went for it because it's a book you haven't read, mm-hmm. so I wanted to give you a surprise. Because you were thinking a few I'd read, like The Queen's Gambit, yeah. which I did give The Queen's Gambit five stars when I read it, but I read it like ten years ago. Okay. And I'm not sure if that's long enough. I for think me it to still fair. holds up. But... Yeah. I, yeah, I want to give you something new. And I think it's different enough from the movie. Oh, I'm I, wasn't sure if you've seen I haven't that. seen the movie. Okay, well, for those of you who have, it's very different. So if you're expecting to know what happens, don't. Interesting. It's completely different. Okay. And it definitely gets a lot more, like, there's a lot more suspense and mystery, I think, in this Ooh. than in the movie as well. Okay. It's maybe more for, like, kind of, like, just easy consumerism. But this is a much longer story with a lot more happening in it. Okay, interesting. I like the Jurassic Park ride at Universal Studios. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no T Rex behind a waterfall. Fuck! <laughs> I would like to see it. Toby, also, do you want to tell them any of your favourite dinosaur facts? Because Toby... Oh my god. <laughs> don't, don't. And Toby was a kid. <laughs> I've forgotten some of them. Although, one fun, he one wanted, fun he fact... He wanted to be a I just, I, I just did this unironically. I okay. can't... Oh my god. Um, you don't one have fun to. fact is that Michael Crichton, who wrote this book, has a dinosaur named after him. 
It's called Crichtonsaurus, funnily enough, and oh. it, um, it's a small angular story. It's got like the big, big tail that wax stuff. Yeah. Velociraptor in this book is way bigger than it should be, and in the movie as well. It's, you know, it's like bigger than a human. In oh, the movies. it was small. It's like in a chicken. Life. It's got feathers and it's chicken size. So it would eat eggs usually, and like small dinosaurs. Interesting. I also like this is completely separate, but you know the scary dinosaur on the dinosaur ride in Animal Kingdom. Yeah, the Carnotaurus. The Carnotaurus. Apparently, that's like three times bigger than Carnotaurus's yeah. actually were, because they needed yeah. it to be again, that big to yeah, support that's, it. Again, that's really small. Yeah, yeah. And it has really tiny, tiny arms and its yeah. head is way bigger than it should be yeah because apparently it had big ankles and so it had yeah. to make it big to uh, the animatronic big to support the Although, ankles an so inverse talking... of that the lophosaurus who's like if you've ever seen it like a clip of it in the movie the one with the frill that spits oh yeah, yeah yeah that's way smaller than it should be that's like Ooh. massive that's bigger than the movie velociraptors toby i've knows. just talked about dinosaurs for so long i'm toby sorry knows he does all the facts anyways thank you toby it's i think right. this is actually gonna be an okay pick i was worried about it when i thought how long it was. It, how long it was, yeah. but it's it's only half of it. So, thank you, Toby. 4.5, what could you think? These, Fives. Like, five and a four, maybe. Oh, well, you and mum together yeah. might get four and five. And then... Yeah. <laughs> this man. Bring it down. He's bringing the team it down. Is. So, I have got to read Mask of Silver. You can stay or go. I'm being silent. We've got to read Mask of Silver, Rosemary Jones. Bride and Jurassic Park. I think these two are good picks. And they go together. They're like black, white, and red. We'll see about this one. I don't know what I'm going to start with. Actually, I do know what I'm going to start with. I'm probably going to start with Bride, if we're honest here. Because I think it's one I'm most excited to read. And then we will read one of these two. But um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to see how this goes. Hello friends. If my nose looks a bit dodgy, it's because I have like the worst hay fever known to man right now. I thought about putting makeup on, but then I thought absolutely not. <laughs> like my eyes have been watering, my nose. It's like some of the most painful, itchy hay fever I've ever had. If you if you see like dots on my hoodie, that's Obersoil I put on out of desperation, even though I knew it probably wouldn't help <laughs> with hay fever. Anyways, I am halfway through Bride and I have a lot of thoughts. So we're following this arranged marriage between a vampire girly and a werewolf boy to try and like, you know, bring alliance between their fraught fractions, try and unite vampires and werewolves who usually hate each other. And a big reason she's agreed to be part of this arranged marriage is she thinks he could know something about her best friend that has gone missing. I think that's all you really need to know. And this first half, there's been a lot of world building. My biggest issue that I'm having so far, this is a very small issue. You know, I'm really enjoying this. It's Ali motherfucking Hazelwood. I can't say Ali motherfucking Hazelwood because Catherine motherfucking Arden, you know, <laughs> holds that title. Anyways, I'm very much enjoying it. We'll get into what I'm enjoying it bad in a second. But we're halfway through. I'm not really bought into their relationship completely yet. I mean, all I can do is be honest with my feelings. However, my opinion of that changes if this is going to be a series. I remember when Mara from Books Like Why read this, she said it's very much set up to be a series. But as of now, there's no news as to whether this is a series or not. And if this is a series, like, it's perfectly normal at the halfway mark for them to not really have had any big moments together. We've kind of just had one where they sat down and spoke to one another, but they've really only had like a few glancing moments together. If that's a series, it's fine. But if this is like a standalone book, then my opinion on that might be a little bit different. So a lot of what we've learned so far has been world building, the history of vampires versus werewolves, the history of these characters upbringing, internal issues within the werewolves, and a lot of her getting to know a lot of different characters. So it's following very different plot beats than one I'm used to with Ellie Hazelwood. Ellie Hazelwood has that shit down to a science, pardon the pun. <laughs> It was a it bit like of a laugh. It's tongue in cheek, Danielle. It's tongue in cheek. It's funny. Well, like in both her adult contemporaries and her YA contemporaries, like it's following a formula, right? Like Ali Hazard has a formula on the wall and she's like, I'm going to follow it. We have this type of scene, then we have this type of scene. And it's very much, you get the characters growing into a relationship very quickly. This is a lot more slow burn um, for me. So that's just an interesting element of it. But I'm very much enjoying it. I think... I'm very much a newbie to this kind of romance. Like I haven't really read, when I say I've read paranormal romance, I, I was 12, I was reading YA, right? I've never read paranormal romance with like arranged marriages. I'm like, I think I've been warned. There's some elements of the smut in there. This is getting a bit crazy. <laughs> I'm quite nervous. I'm a little bit concerned. 
So I definitely feel a little bit like there's tropes of this subgenre that this book is probably meeting and meeting well that I can't necessarily judge it on. Like I can't say, oh, this is a good version of this because I don't know what the fuck is normal in this situation. But I do, I love Ali Hazelwood's writing. I love Ali Hazelwood's writing. At the moment, this is gonna be at least a four. Um, but I think this second half is really gonna be what determines my rating of it. I feel like we've definitely very much got into the world. I just wanna, you know, with Ali Hazelwood's romances, I always love the romance. Like I like, I'm sitting here like giggling at like the way that they talk to one another. I haven't necessarily got that yet. I haven't necessarily got the chemistry between them yet, but um, you know, I'm loving the writing. I'm intrigued to see where this is gonna go. But at the moment it is feeling like pacing wise, it's a series book, not a standalone book. So that's just intriguing because I double checked on Goodreads. There's nothing confirmed about any kind of sequel to this yet. Yeah, I'm enjoying, you know, they come from these worlds that like, there shouldn't even be, has it ever even been a romance between a vampire and a werewolf? Like they're forbidden and like this forbidden love and there's these little, oh, I forgot to show you as well. At the start of every chapter, there's, ah! <laughs> is one thing that's getting me. So it's all told from her perspective, but at the start of every chapter, there's like a sentence or a little paragraph from his perspective showing how he's absolutely fucking head over heels in love with her. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Yep. 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 She ate that up. <sighs> but she doesn't think that. She thinks like he hates how she smells. Like, cause when they got married, he was like, how do you smell like that? It's obvious he thinks she smells like fucking the this, this shit that Disney pumps out of sweet shops, niche reference, but like walking down Main Street, I'm ready to part with some coin for some of those Rice Krispie treats. You get what I mean? That, <laughs> that's why all of my analogies always link to food. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really enjoying that, how we're only viewing um, elements of his love for her through these glimpses and they're such like, let me find one. This isn't a spoiler. Let me find, there was a recent one that I really enjoyed, one sec. The scent is growing into more than just a problem. It invades, it swirls, it travels, it sticks to his nose, it concentrates sometimes. They rarely touch. When they did, her wrist accidentally brushed against the front of his shirt and he found himself tearing off the piece of fabric where her smell was most intense. He slipped it in his pocket and now carries it everywhere. Even even as he leaves to avoid her. I'm absolutely feral. Okay, I'm gonna go finish this tonight. I'll probably see you first thing in the morning with my thoughts. I'm nervous for the thing that people have told me to be nervous about. If you know, you know. I maybe will mention that once I've read it. <laughs> so I'll see you in a bit, but I'm very much enjoying it. Oh, I'm choking. I'm intrigued to see where it goes. Good morning, friends. I finished Bride by Ali Hazelwood this morning, and I'm gonna give this a four star, which is my lowest rated Ali Hazelwood. <laughs> This is a crazy moment. I've never given her really anything below a five star. I did rate Love in the Brain 4.5 originally, but I since up that to a five. And this one is a four for me. I still did really enjoy it. I just don't know if I was really connected to the romantic relationship in this. You know when you read a five star romance, you are like, oh, you're like, I love them together so much. Like they go together perfectly. I want them to end up together. I never really felt that with them. I think there's a lot of like the supernatural element in this of like, I don't want to spoil anything, but like how their species may, may feel things biologically. I think that's doing a lot of the heavy lifting. And maybe that's just like a difference in kind of paranormal romance. And that's not something I read, but like, I never cared <laughs> much about them. You think I mean, I'm just telling the truth. You? I'm not lying. What? Now the sex scenes were hot. I'll give her that. Ali Hayeswood knows how to write a sex scene. Do you know what I mean? Well, apart from, we'll get into the, the thing <laughs> that I, could, I don't even know how to talk about. Apart from that, Let's put that out of the, out of the brain. But like the chemistry, the sexual chemistry was there, but I don't know if I ever cared about them as a romantic couple. Like I was like, like sure, fuck. But like, I don't know if, sorry for my crassness, but um, I never knew if I like was like, oh my God, I feel like you're romantically really perfectly matched. Do you know what I mean? But I do think it's interesting and it's an interesting world that's been built up. I feel like some elements of it felt a little bit like cartoony, <laughs> like this is, like it felt like, um, what's the, I've never seen it, but like, you know, Batman has a town, like it, this like fake town, but like it's, it's real, not town, city, like this fake city where these supernatural forces rule rather than, I think I would prefer paranormal romance that's like either fully, like we're talking, we're on alien land <laughs> or it's like in Twilight when it's like in a real world. I don't think this is ever, noted as like where this is set. It's like vaguely human, but like 
you know, also these supernatural forces in vampires and werewolves rule, you know what I mean? So yeah, I just think that isn't my preferred kind of location and like setting and world building. Um, and I feel like you could tell it's her first time doing kind of a supernatural world building element. The thing, <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything. Has anyone got anything to say? Because mm -hmm. I don't have a ton to say about it. The, should I even say the word? If you know, let me not, I knew about it going into it, right? I'd spoken about it with my patrons, but there's a certain like thing that happens in the sex scenes. That's like, a, I think like a common supernatural trope, paranormal romance trope. And like, it's weird. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not, you know, I don't want to yuck anyone's yum, but like, I'm not. I don't understand why we'd be super into that. <laughs> but I don't think it's the weirdest thing I've ever read. Everyone was telling me, oh my God, Megan, you're gonna be like so grossed out. Like I enjoyed it until that moment. Like, it's, you know, it's like kind of like, oh, is that all? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's weird, but I don't think it's like beyond the realm of, of what I've read before in this world. You know what I mean? So anyways, and it's definitely set up, oh, it's definitely set up to be a series, but not a romance between them, seemingly a romance between another potential couple. So what I was saying about being at the halfway point and not necessarily feeling anything for them still stands because I don't think we're gonna get like, this isn't a Twilight situation where we're getting four books based on them. I keep saying Twilight because that's like my only <laughs> reference. So four stars, you know, puts us at an okay standing, but not a wonderful standing considering mum was our best <laughs> our best shot. I'm now gonna start and read as much as I can today of Jurassic Park. I'm really excited for this one actually. I've got the audiobook and I think there's a really good shot of me enjoying it. So I'm gonna sink my teeth into... <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> There's a lot of biting going on in that book. I'm gonna sink my teeth into this today. I also have a parcel that like the size of it is confusing me. I believe this is from a publisher. Now, I don't think I've requested anything or been asked if I want anything, but I could have been. <laughs> So I have no idea what this is. I'm so excited, this is so exciting, but I, I have no idea what it is. No idea, I don't remember requesting something, but I, I have a vague memory of someone asking me if I wanted something, I said yeah. They said, oh, it'll be in at some point. So this could be that. <gasps> no, I know what it is. No, I did agree to this. Holy, oh my God, guys. Oh my God, there's loads of stuff. Oh my God. <laughs> no, this is so exciting. This is so exciting. This is so exciting. Guys, you'll never guess what it is. It is an arc of The Examiner by Janice Hallett. And we've got pens. No, it's a coloring thing. <laughs> it's my birthday. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. Happy birthday to me. This is Janice Hallett's next release. This comes out August of this year. Oh my God, it's in front of me. What else have we got? A class of 2024 notebook. Oh my goodness. Is these stickers? We have special stickers. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm freaking out. So this is what the actual cover is going to look like. <gasps> and there's a little, there's a little note. Okay. It says, dear reader, I need to oversee the final grades for a master's degree at a prestigious university. Despite access to all the documents I need and some I wouldn't normally expect to see, I find myself unable to grade the submissions. In fact, I can't quite work out what happened on that course at all. It was either something so disturbing I can't even bring myself to write it down, or as the police seem to think, it was nothing. I appreciate your help. Please find the enclosed and let me know. For context, it includes an academic year calendar marked with key dates, the official guidelines that govern our marking process, and my correspondence with the college admins. Be aware, if my worst fears are true, then one of the students on this course is dead. Thank you, the examiner. Six students, one murder. Your time starts now. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Look, there's the academic calendar with these other. Ah! I'm so, <laughs> I'm so excited. Thank you so much to Viper Books for sending this to me. <gasps> I don't know what to do with myself. This is like beyond exciting. And it's a coloring thing. Oh my gosh. Those of you who watch this channel know, I love a bit of Janice Hallett. I love Janice Hallett. So I cannot believe that I got my hands on this. This is so exciting. Ah, okay, I'm gonna go start Jurassic Park, but what I can't believe this is in my hands. My goodness. <laughs> Good morning, friends. I probably look absolutely rotted. I've literally just woken up 15 minutes ago. 
<laughs> so apologies if I sound a bit tired. But last night I got halfway through Jurassic Park and I want to read more immediately this morning. So I need to talk to you. I'm that far in, but the book is only like <laughs> that long. I am loving this. I'm having the best time reading this. So I wasn't expecting that at all. I don't think I need to give you a synopsis of Jurassic Park. I mean, from my understanding, what Toby told me, the book is very different to the film, but this, the premise is the same. A rich guy is making this dinosaur park and we've got these characters going to visit it. And I think that's what you need to know. But you do go into it with certain expectations, right? Like you kind of know, you know, shit's gonna go wrong. Like you're <laughs> kind of reading it at this point, aware of that. I thought the way that Michael Crichton built up the suspense in the first half of this book was absolutely masterful. I'm at the halfway mark and, you know, I don't wanna spoil too much, but stuff is only really begin to go, you know, shit's only really beginning to hit the fan. And the way that the suspense was built for us during that first half was just absolutely incredible. I think it's like some of the best suspense where like it's slow, <laughs> nothing's really happening, but we're sitting there like, oh shit, <laughs> something's gonna go wrong. It's just a movie, it's pretend. You're an adult, you should know that. So I think the writing is wonderful. I'm really enjoying the kind of mix of sci-fi versus like a thrillery aspect to it. I will say there's a lot of characters and I don't really remember who they all are. You know, there's a lot of men. We have one woman, I know who the woman is, but like there's all these men and I'm like, which one are you? Which one, which one of these men are you? So I'm getting them a little bit confused, but like, I don't think the story stu suffers from that because I don't think, there's like a few key ones who I know who they are. And then the rest I think are a little bit expendable maybe. So I don't think that impacts it too much, but I can't believe what a fun time I'm having reading this. Also, I think dinosaurs are something that, like I find nostalgic because Toby used to love dinosaurs when he was little. He used to be like obsessed with dinosaurs and know everything you can imagine about dinosaurs. And so dinosaurs were a big part of our familial life. <laughs> I bought him his first dinosaur, let it be known. I began the obsession. He's not into it anymore, but there's something about reading about dinosaurs. I'm like, oh my God, I lived my whole life watching him watch dinosaur documentaries. So it's just fun reading about dinosaurs again. I'm having so much fun with this and it makes me want to read more about dinosaurs. <laughs> What's wrong with me? No, I'm having the most fun. So I'm gonna go continue. I'll check in with you when I'm finished. But Toby might have a better pick than mum, which is saying something. I you know, it sounds crazy. And it, indeed it was. I just love the way it's written. I love the way that like the story, it reminds me of almost like Thursday Murder Club where we're following different scenarios and we like, flip back and forth between them at the perfect time. Obviously very different tonally, but we flip back and forth between them at the perfect time. Oh, the camera has not been focused on me. I don't know how long it hasn't been focused on me, but you don't want to be focused on me at this early in the morning. Yeah, we're flipping back and forth between, like we leave a scene at the perfect time for the tension to hold, and then we go into the next one. And it's like, I feel like it's cycling through them at this point so well. So I'm loving it. I'm gonna go to continue it. And I love this edition. It's so cute. Anyways, yeah, I think this could be quite the high rating, so I'm excited. Okie dokie, I have finished Jurassic Park. I'm gonna give it a 4.5. I've really, really enjoyed this. I can't believe how much I enjoyed it. I just thought it was so fun. This book has so many twists and turns because there is a large cast of characters, which we'll get into in a second, but because there is a large cast of characters, there's a lot of people who can be expendable. <laughs> <laughs> and you can die for a dinosaur. I just thought it was incredibly interesting. It reminded me a lot of Andy Weir, who I love because he explains science-y terms in a way that I can understand so I can read his sci-fi. And this was similar, I feel like. Like it explained the kind of science-y, I don't even need to know if they're correct or not, but it explained the science-y side of it in humble enough terms that I could actually read it and understand it. I will just say the reason it's not a five is I did not give a shit about quite a few of these characters. I do think there is a few too many, but that's a difficult balancing act in making sure your characters feel well fleshed out, but also making sure that some of them are still expendable enough. For me, the, the star characters are like Grant and the kids and Malcolm and Ellie. Like I feel like they're, and I, from what I understand, they're kind of the main characters of the film as well. They're the characters that feel most fleshed out and like I know them. In the end of the day, there's too many men. This book could have been better <laughs> if there was a few more women. Man. Yeah! There's, I really struggle when there's too many men in a book where it's like all men and one woman. You men all start to burn together. Like I feel like, and then there were none. When I read it and then there were none, I was like, who are all these men? I don't care. 
<laughs> but no, I really enjoyed it. Let me know, should I read the sequel? Or should it, is it best experience as a, as a standalone? Because obviously this is a bind up of the first and second. By the way, I think the dye has really like spread from me holding it. I think, do I have, are my hands quite red? <laughs> I think this, the red dye spreads a bit. I'm unsure whether I should read the second book or not. Let me know. Is it better to read as a standalone? But I think this is an incredibly accessible modern classic. I really enjoyed the audiobook, so I'd recommend that. I just had such a fun time reading it. It was so fun. You know, this is why I also want to read older classics as well. It's fun to read like a piece of modern media that is so influential and so important. Like, listen, I go... I love when I go Universal Orlando. You know, the Jurassic Park land, the Jurassic Park ride, and like all of those vibes are so like nostalgic to me that it was a lot of fun to read this. So by my calculations, that leaves us an average rating of a 4.25 from the first two books. So let's see how much dad can bring it down. <laughs> but I've done the maths. In order to get a 3.8 average rating or higher in this log, this has to get at least a three star. So <laughs> we shall see whether it manages it. I mean, this is like, it's old Hollywood, that element of it could be exciting. I went and got the audiobook for this as well, just because I want to get through it. But let's see what Dad's pick is like, shall we? Are we nervous? A little bit. But I think we can do it. <laughs> okay, friends. <laughs> Hi. We just went out for lunch slash dinner at this place that like, have you ever been to those places where you sit at your table and you have like a, a paddle that you have on green or red and they bring on meat, they bring like different cuts of meat, like sausages, steak, burger, I don't know, chicken, like all these different types of meat and they like just put it on your plate. Ever been to those places? I'm like speaking slurred because I'm so I'm, like a food baby. And <laughs> we went to one of those, but for pizza. So they just bring you slices and slices and slices of pizza, but like all these different flavors. Oh my God, it's like magical. It's the best thing. I haven't been in years and I went, we're going today. <laughs> we went and I'm so full. I don't know how many different flavors, or different um, slices of pizza. My favorite is this speck and mascarpone slice. I, do, I love mascarpone. Oh my God. And we had, I had this uh, hot honey dipping sauce. Oh my God, I'm so full. I'm so full. So. I'm gonna be talking to you from a slightly like pizza haze. <laughs> I'm halfway through Mask of Silver by Rosemary Jones. Now, if you don't know, Arkham Horror is a game. I mean, I don't really know. <laughs> My dad loves. And I think Arkham, I asked him, I think Arkham is the town that like this story is set in. And this is like a series. My dad had, has loads of these where it's like IP written by different authors of like stuff to do with this game. So in this one, we're following a cast of characters who work on like a film, an old silent film together. And they go back, the director's hometown is Arkham. So they go back to the hometown and they're like filming a short horror film there. But then things start going wrong. Perhaps paranormal things start happening. Here's the thing. I went into this with such low expectations and I'm like kind of pleasantly surprised, which I think is the right way for me to have gone about this. But I'm like, you know, I'm enjoying it. I'm having a good time. But, you know, am I going to remember any of this? Not really. <laughs> I quite like our protagonist character who, you know, whose perspective we're reading from. She is a young Chinese girl. Well, both her, her and her sister are both in this book. She is the um, makeup and costumer and her sister is the actress. But they don't tell anyone they're sisters because she, they're half Chinese, half Swedish. And she visibly looks Chinese, but her sister passes as white. So they don't kind of out themselves as sisters to anyone. And that's an interesting dynamic. And I like our main character, but I think a lot of the other characters are fairly forgettable. <laughs> clap if you care. Clap if you, clap if you care. But I think it's important to, we're not judging this book in the same way we judge other books, right? This is different. It's for fans of a game. It's a bit more like simple, cozy. I think of how I judge things like the Lady Hardcast Mysteries. Obviously I love those a little more. But when you go into a book knowing that it's not supposed to be like the next big boss blockbuster, it's just like a kind of cozy, comforting, quick read. Like there's different types of books for different types of reading is what I'm saying. And I don't think this is to be judged for the same type of reading as the other two books we read in this. That might be me being generous and just being like, it's okay that it's not the best. <laughs> but I am in 
enjoying it. I'm having fun reading it. I don't think the writing is bad. I think it's okay. There's moments, there's a lot at the end of the character, there's a lot of moments at the end of chapters though where she's like, little did we know how bad it would soon get. Do you know what I mean? At the end of the chapter, we would soon regret that. Little did we know what Arkham had in store for us. Like, there's been multiple times that's been edited chapters, which is a bit annoying. I don't really know how I feel about it. It's fine. It's not blowing my socks off, but it's not terrible. You know, I like the old Hollywood aspect. It's very interesting reading about silent film and how they're making the film. And I think there's a lot of fun elements to it, the kind of mystery element. So I am enjoying it, but like, Am I gonna remember I read this by the end of the year? I don't know. <laughs> but I can understand why my dad likes it, right? Like these these are based off his favorite game. It's similar to why I love Lady Hardcastle. Like that's my favorite vibes. It's a quaint, cozy little mystery that you can just like, you know, it, you don't have to think too much when reading about it, but it's like all of the vibes in Lady Hardcastle, all the aesthetics that it's based off of, I love, right? So this is a similar thing, but for him. So I understand why he enjoys it and why he picked it. I'm being kind. So I'm gonna go finish it tonight. I'll probably check in with you last thing in the morning, but I'm a, I have a feeling, you know, this is gonna bring the average rating of this video so far down, but I still think this may be our most successful episode of Year of Rex yet, which, listen, we've been waiting. We've been waiting. <laughs> it's been 84 years. It's okay, just try. Yeah, I'll check in with you once I finished it. I, would I recommend this to any of you? Probably not. But if you, anyone out there's a fan of Arkham Horror and you didn't know there was IP books about it, well then here you go, they're all right. <laughs> Good morning, friends. I have finished Mask of Silver and I'm going to give this three stars. I did actually just tell my dad downstairs I'm giving it a 3.5, but then I thought, no, I've got to give it a three. <laughs> but I did tell a bit of a lie there. Like I was saying in the previous clip, this isn't bad. I can see whose audience this book is and I can see why my dad loves it. I can see why other people love it. It's just not for me, right? It's not for me and like, we all know that. <laughs> That's why we all told him not to fucking pick it, and yet he did. Maybe I should have picked Dune, but like, I just don't know if I'm ready for that. Like, I don't know if that, if right now is the time where I should read Dune. Yes, I could have read it and given it a higher rating than this, but would I, am I doing that book a disservice in my entire life by reading it now? Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't think this is bad. I do feel like the ending was really rushed. There's some really interesting stuff that happens in the last like 50, 60 pages where I think the book would have been so much stronger if that had been stretched out, where she's basically going to like people in the town and asking them things and finding things out about the town and about people she knows and like putting the pieces together. And that's really, really condensed at the end. And I feel like it could have been so much stronger if that was kind of put throughout the book. So there's a lot of the book where there's just like things going wrong and spooky and she's like, oh, you know? Whereas I think it could have been a lot stronger if that had been extended. There's also some stuff at the end. I don't, I mean, I'm not gonna spoil it in case anyone is interested, but like I think the four of you who are interested in this is very small. But there's like supernatural elements at the end that come on very strong. Like in terms of like people being possessed all of a sudden and like talking like robots and like this. And there'd been no signs of that. Like it, the stuff at the end, like the big like denouement, there's a lot of elements that like come out of fucking nowhere and you're like oh what the hell is happening <laughs> but I do think there was some interesting horror, horror elements in this I did like the 1920s setting and also this small America town you know like it's very different reading a book set in this time period in America in particularly in small towns I feel like a lot of the stuff we read in this in 1920s like New York you know what I mean or like LA like big cities but it's interesting going to a small town because America has like no history <laughs> Yup, 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 yup. So like if you're reading something set in this time period in the, in England, like we're, we're kicking, like people have been living here forever. There's like a lot more um, history to that area. It's when you're in a town like this, that's only just sprung up like in the past hundred years or whatever, I don't know, quite American timeline, but you know what I mean? It's very new. There's this newness to the town that is an interesting element, you know? So that does mean that our average rating for this episode of Year of Rex is 3.83, which is our most successful episode of Year of Rex yet. And also the only one so far that has got a 3.8 or above, which is my goal for my average Average rating for the year. So this so far is our only Year of Rex episode that has been successful according to like the technical <laughs> rules. And I think these are both really good picks. I am shocked by how much I loved Jurassic Park. I thought it was so fun and 
Dad, you could have picked Brandon Sanderson. You could have picked The Final Empire and I probably would have given it five stars. Let's just leave that there. But um, yeah, I'm so happy we finally got a Year of Rex episode that is a 3.8 or above. And hopefully all the episodes will now be a 3.8 or above. Hopefully the series will start to get like, I don't know, into its stride a little bit. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought of my family's recommendations. Let me know if I should have picked a different book than the ones who gave me options. And I'll see you guys soon in another video. Bye.